didn't want to let it go. I felt like I'd given so much. And I told the entire Bible study what was going on with me, that I was having sex with my boyfriend, that I knew that God didn't want me to be in this relationship and that I was struggling with a soul tie. Holding a grudge only tightens the grip of a soul tie. So while I was doing my own thing, God was relentlessly chasing me down. If you are new here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a video. And for those of you returning, welcome back. For daily encouragement, Bible study series, and unlimited videos to grow your faith, I invite you to join the Beloved Women app. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about soul ties. And because I'm gonna be sharing my personal stories as well as giving you practical steps towards healing, this video is gonna be just a little bit longer than normal. So I have provided a healed, holy, and whole guide below to help you walk through this video as you process your own healing journey. You can click the link below to get that guide. It's absolutely free. I just wanna make sure that you get the most out of today's message. Because if I had known what I'm about to share with you in today's video, I could have saved a lot of heartbreak and trauma. We're talking about soul ties. And while the term is not in the Bible, a soul tie is the unseen connection you have with someone you've engaged with sexually. Now, society will have you believe that sex is just sex, but God created sex. And when we understand his purpose for it, we'll realize why so much harm comes when sex is not used the way that God intended. God designed for sex to consummate the covenant between a man and a woman. It bonds two people together in the flesh to represent their covenant to God with each other. Jesus explains it this way in Mark 10 verses 6 through 9. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let not man separate. God never designed for casual sex or that one person would abandon another. The bond created was never meant to be separated. So much so that when you have sex, your body releases hormones that make you feel more connected and bonded. God's plan is that commitment comes before intimacy because sexual intimacy creates bonds that are seen and unseen. As humans, we are composed of a body, soul, and spirit, all connected together. So what happens in the body impacts the soul. It's unfortunate because society has done an excellent job of tricking us into believing that casual sex doesn't have any impact on your soul. I was reading Gabrielle Union's memoir and she was giving advice to young women and one of the pieces of advice that she gave was that they should just have sex in their youth and have as much sex with anybody, anywhere that they want and as much as they can. And you know, what irritates me about this mindset is that it completely ignores the body, soul, and spirit connection. The world will tell you, oh, sex is just sex and women need to be less emotional, less attached, less clingy, but we are wired for connection. We're wired for bonding. Elizabeth Elliot wrote a book that I love called Let Me Be a Woman. And I appreciate the clarity of her message because the world is sending us mixed signals. Have sex with just any and everybody and don't take it too seriously. Don't get too attached, but also be feminine, be, be a lady. Then when we go out and we do those things and we create those bonds and we're heartbroken, we're told that we shouldn't feel that way. When we were literally created by God, to feel that way. So now we have women whose bodies, souls, and spirits are not in alignment and in harmony with how God made us. And what that breeds is a lot of broken women, disconnected from ourselves and God's design for us to flourish in life. With casual sex, broken homes, and divorce, it's common that what God created to stay together is often torn apart. And the truth is, our souls were not meant to experience this type of bond 
only for it to then be broken. I grew up in the church, so this teaching was not new to me as a youth. I went to the True Love Waits conference and I committed to waiting until marriage for sex. However, in high school, I started dating a young man and I found myself feeling pressure that if I didn't have sex, I would lose the relationship. And at that time, I didn't have the emotional wholeness to let the relationship go to keep my commitment to God. So I ended up breaking my promise to God and myself, and I entered a season of shame and condemnation, which caused me to distance myself from God. But one day, God spoke to me as clear as you hear me now, and I promise you it's the only time I've ever heard God that clearly. And he said to me, I love you. Now that sounds so simple, but knowing that I had been faithless to God, had been running from him and distancing myself from him for, for that to be the first thing I hear from him after that situation. It just reminded me of his faithfulness to me and it changed me forever. And it's the very reason why this ministry is called Beloved Women. While I was trying to push God away because I was ashamed, he was pulling me closer. And it was then that God made it very clear to me that I needed to break up with my boyfriend. And I didn't initially because a soul tie had been developed. I didn't want to let it go. I felt like I'd given so much. But it wasn't until God gave me a dream warning me what would happen if I didn't let go and also some crazy events that took place that finally led me to ending it. But I was broken. And that was the start of a very long journey towards healing and wholeness. Our souls were not meant to experience abandonment, rejection, betrayal, or heartbreak. But this is what happens as a result of a soul tie being severed, something God never intended for you or me to experience. But if you found yourself in a similar situation or if you're in one right now, I'm sharing my story with you to give you practical steps towards healing and wholeness because I am living proof that there is hope on the other side of your heartbreak. In this video, we're gonna talk about misconceptions about soul ties that we must let go of if we truly want to be healed, six signs that you have an ungodly soul tie, and how to practically break an ungodly soul tie to experience the wholeness that God desires for you. As I stated earlier, a soul tie is the unseen connection you have with someone you've engaged with sexually. But we need to make sure that we're all on the same page by discussing some common misconceptions about soul ties. First, Soul ties are not God's punishment against you. Soul ties are a result of the way that God designed us. Your heartbreak is not God's wrath against you, but the natural consequences of a God that made you to be loved and not mistreated, to be whole and not broken. God is not punishing you, so you don't need to feel the need to punish yourself by not seeking forgiveness and healing because wholeness is still God's plan for you. It's the entire reason he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sins. Second, Sexual intercourse is not always required to develop a soul tie. Any sexual activity that you participate in with someone else can cause a soul tie to be developed. Third, not all soul ties are bad. You want to have a soul tie, a bond with your spouse. It's one of the reasons why God created sex, to connect intimately with the person that God called you to be in covenant with. By the way, Tony Evans has a sermon called It's a Covenant, Not a Contract that I highly suggest that you watch after this. It is the clearest and most comprehensive biblical teaching I've ever heard on marriage. All right, fourth, broken soul ties are generally not healed in a short amount of time. This is why I'm not really in love with the term breaking a soul tie because I think it gives the image that our souls are tied together and you just need to cut it off or break it in and be done and you're done. But more often than not, healing is a process that takes time. Now, there is a breaking that needs to happen as far as you disconnecting yourself from someone that God does not mean for you to be with. However, after that, 
we need to go through a process of healing the soul, not just only breaking the soul tie. Being free from a soul tie is important to God because we can't love him with all of our soul if our soul is connected to something that's not in his will for us. Unfortunately, a lot of people are still broken because they feel that breaking the relationship is all that it takes and don't see the need for healing. They might not even realize that they have a soul tie. So before we discuss how to heal from a broken soul tie, we need to know what signs to look for to determine if we have a soul tie in the first place. So here are some signs that you have a soul tie. One, you are in a relationship with someone God has not appointed you to be with, yet you do not want to leave this person. Two, you desire to be with someone who has either verbally or non-verbally expressed that they do not want to be with you. Three, you can't let go of the dream or fantasy you have of being with someone who is not for you. Four, you've cut off the person, but you've never processed the pain. You try to act like they don't exist, you don't even say their name, but avoidance is not healing. And you still have a soul tie if you've not processed the heartbreak. Five, you can't talk about or think about the relationship without crying or experiencing immense pain, shame, or guilt. Six, you have unforgiveness towards yourself or the other person. Forgiveness is not just a pardon, but it's a release. It's letting the person go. If you have not forgiven them, then you're still holding on. Now, I've experienced all of these at one point or another during my healing journey. And if you have as well, then let's move towards how we can heal from a broken soul tie. In order to learn what practical steps we can take to heal from a broken soul tie, we need to understand what is a soul. So it's believed that your soul consists of your mind, which is your thoughts, your heart, which is your emotions and your feelings, and your will, which is your desire. Wholeness occurs when all three are in alignment with God's mind, his heart, and his will. Now, you might be thinking, sex is physical. Can't I just stop having sex with the person to break the soul tie? No because sex is not just physical as we discussed before. It's a soul connection that causes you to develop thoughts, feelings, and desires for the person that you have sex with that exist well beyond the physical act of intercourse. So yes, there is a first step to healing that includes physically distancing yourself from the person that you have a soul tie with because you can't heal from a broken soul tie with someone that you're actively having sex with. You're just reinforcing those bonds every time. So yes, a first step is physical separation. But after that, we need to move towards soul healing of the mind, the heart, and the will. So we'll discuss healing each part of your soul, starting with your mind. Our minds have a difficult time understanding heartbreak, betrayal, and grief because we weren't created to deal with those things. So there is a lot of mental care that we need to give ourselves when it comes to healing from a broken soul tie. As the relationship that I told you about earlier was ending, I was having a conversation with my ex-boyfriend just about some of the discouragements and things that I was not happy about that were happening within the relationship. And he made a comment to me at the time and he said, well, all relationships have issues. And the thought was, well, you might as well stay even with the issues because things aren't gonna get any better if you go anywhere else. You won't find anything better. And I don't know if it was the rebellious side of me or if it was the Holy Spirit rising up, I don't know. But I immediately clapped back and I said, no, I can do better than this. Things at the time had gotten quite difficult and toxic and I know that God allowed that to happen because he was the one really just initiating this break and I had my part to do in it as well but when he said that all relationships have issues something in me was just like no I could do better than this and honestly I don't really know if I even believed that at the time I didn't know what the future held but that comment ended up being low-key prophetic because it came true and I'll, we'll talk more about that later but had I held on to that thought, all relationships have issues, I might as well stay. And please note here, there was no intention of improvement. I would have stayed bound to that relationship that wasn't for me. Even if I chose to believe that thought after the breakup, I still would have been bound to that relationship because my mind would always be comparing and thinking, 
I'll never do better. The thoughts you think and believe are essential to your healing journey. If you want to be healed, you need to ask yourself, do my thoughts align with the truth of God? So here are some thought patterns that will keep you bound and prevent you from healing and wholeness. No one will love me better than this. All relationships have issues. They do, but that's not an excuse to stay in a toxic relationship. And it's not an excuse not to work on the relationship to try to get better. I don't deserve more than this. I can't do better than this. I can't be happy alone. An honorable mention, are the fantasies that we have in our head about a future with this person. All of these thoughts will keep you stuck and broken. This is why the Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds in Romans 12 verse two. We have to choose to think differently. The truth is you can think differently because you do have control over your thoughts. Just because a thought pops in your mind doesn't mean you have to dwell on it. Just because someone tells you how to think doesn't mean you have to believe them. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Now this verse was talking about false gospels that were circulating during that time, but the truth still stands that regardless of the lie, we have power to bring our thoughts into alignment with God's truth. We have the power and the strength to make our thoughts obedient to Christ. So when a thought says, no one will love you anymore. God says, I love you most and more than anyone. When a thought says all relationships have issues, God says, I desire you to have whole and healed relationships. When a thought says you can't be happy alone, God says, you're never alone. I'm always with you. When a thought says you've gone too far, you've sinned too much, you can't come back from this, God says, I've forgiven you and cover you with my love by the sacrifice of my son, Jesus Christ. When a thought says your identity is in your relationship, God says, I formed you and gave you a purpose before you were even born. When a thought says you can't do better, God says, you can't even think or imagine all that I have for you. If you're healing from a soul tie, my challenge to you is to write down all the thoughts that you're thinking and ask yourself, does this align with God's truth? Because Jesus tells us it is the truth that will set us free. Now, once you have your mind right, that doesn't always change how you feel. So in addition to mental healing, emotional healing also needs to happen in the heart. Our emotions experience pain in the form of grief, disappointment, discouragement, shame, resentfulness, and more. These feelings are not bad in and of themselves, but they are indicators to us that something is broken and something needs to be healed. Now this healing takes time and it's also healing that only God can do. Just like I had a dream of God telling me to break up with my ex that started the process of breaking that soul tie, it was years later that I had another dream where I heard God say, it's over. And I truly felt in the spirit that I was free from that soul tie. It was a long journey and I wish that I could give you a five-step plan to heal your heart in two days. Trust me, I would if I could. All I can tell you is healing happens in God's timing and in his presence. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalm 147 verse 3 that says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That binding is God getting near to you. It's him taking his time to wrap and heal and comfort and soothe your wounds. If your heart is broken, you hold the promise that God is near. Healing is a journey, but you never walk alone. It's in the presence of God that true healing begins with what I'm gonna call the three R's to soul recovery. Rest, request, and release. First, to heal our hearts, we need to rest our hearts. Just like a physical injury, rest is a requirement to healing. We find true soul rest in the presence of Christ. Jesus tells us, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
Resting in Christ looks like letting go of control and surrendering your heart to Christ as you trust him to meet your needs instead of trying to manufacture happiness on your own from the world or from people pleasing. Resting in Christ gives us a quiet confidence that is grown as we make room for God to have his way and stop fighting to try to make things and people the way we think they should be. It's being content with where Christ has you. The peace that comes from that contentment starts to heal the broken places of our hearts as we begin to see what we've always been craving has been right in front of us all along. Resting in Christ is so important as we heal because he promises to carry our load that's too heavy for us to carry on our own. We don't have to walk around with shame and fear and confusion and trust issues and anxiety. We can give it all to Christ to make our load lighter as we journey towards healing. Second, we need to make our request to God to heal our hearts. This is prayer. And prayer is what unlocks God's power in our lives to do what we can't do on our own. This is our pouring out our hearts to God. It's our telling him what we honestly want, how we really feel, and asking for what we need. Now, you might be thinking, why would I do that? God already knows, and he's still just going to do what he wants to do anyways. Yes, God already knows. He already has his plans. But the point of prayer is not to treat God like a genie in a bottle, and we just use the right words and get what we want. The purpose of prayer is to connect with God. It not only has the power to change our circumstances, but to change our hearts as well as it ushers us into the healing presence of God. Also, prayer is the key that unlocks God's power in our lives to do what we can't. Tony Evans once said, there are some things that God doesn't release until we ask for them. Then we pray because God cares. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. As I was healing from my broken heart, I remember every day I would get off work. I was at an internship because I was at college, in college at this time. I would go to my room and I would read my Bible and I would pray until I felt a little bit better. <laughs> And I did that for a very long time, but I would just pour out my heart to God until I felt his presence or I heard a word from him or I felt him stir in my heart until I reminded my soul that he was there. Prayer gives us space to release our hurt and grieve our pain, grieve what was lost and what never will be. If we can't get real about our cares and anxiety, then we can't heal from them and we can get real with God. So take time to get real and honest with him because he cares. And when you trust that he cares, you know that he will move on your behalf. This is where true emotional heart healing starts. Finally, the last R for soul recovery is release. Release includes confession and forgiveness for yourself and others. 1 John 1 verse 19 tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Secrets are never good for the soul. The enemy will hold our past against us to keep us trapped in shame, regret, and fear. But when we confess our sins, we bring them to the light so that God can forgive us and so that we can be set free. I felt a lot of shame around my breakup because I broke my promise to myself and to God to wait to have sex until I got married. And the enemy attacked me so much with accusations and condemnation. I felt like I was drowning. I just remember taking showers and trying to just wash it off and just felt worse. As I distanced myself from God during that time because I felt so much shame, I wasn't going to church, I wasn't praying, I wasn't reading my Bible, I was just going to school, I was in college at the time like I shared with you, and I was just going through the motions. And that's the enemy's ultimate plan, to separate you from God. Now, the enemy might convince you to distance yourself from God, but he will never be successful at keeping God from you. So while I was doing my own thing, God was relentlessly chasing me down. One day, my friends and I went shopping and on our way back to campus, they asked me if I had anything else going on that evening and I said no. So then they invited me 
to Bible study that night. And I felt trapped because I already communicated to them that I was free. And so I reluctantly said, sure. Cause you know, I hadn't been in a while. I wasn't making any type of attempt to connect with God. And so I just thought to myself, all right, let me go. I I'll feel guilty if I say no, cause they know I'm free. And I thought to myself, I'll just zone out, you know, it's only going to be an hour and then I'll go on with my normal life. However, when I got to Bible study that night, the leader welcomed everyone so excitedly and announced the topic of the study that night and said that the topic that night would be sexual purity. My heart dropped. I'm thinking to myself, God, are you serious? I, I, I already know that I'm wrong, okay? I feel very bad about it and I don't even know what to do with that. Now listen, I don't remember anything about that Bible study. I don't remember what scripture they were coming from. I don't remember what was said. I don't remember who shared what. I just remember being in a fog the entire study. But at the end of the study, the Lord started to speak to me. So we're sitting in a circle on the floor and as everyone starts to get up to leave because Bible study is over at this point, God told me, he, he's press, impressing it on my spirit at this time to confess my sin. And I'm like, nope, I did, that was not God. <laughs> but God would not let it go. He just kept pressing it on my heart to tell them what was going on with me. Now look, I don't even know half these people like that. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good, God. No, I'm, I'm good. But I was froze, like I could not move. So then I felt God say, do it for me. And I just heard him so clearly in my spirit. And I couldn't say no because I already broke a promise. And I just, there was nothing in me that could just be out of his will like that again. So I slowly rose my hand and was like, wait, before you leave, I, I have something that I need to say. And I told the entire Bible study what was going on with me, that I was having sex with my boyfriend, that I knew that God didn't want me to be in this relationship and that I was struggling with a soul tie. And I know that moment was ordained by God because I was met with so much grace and love from some people that I knew and a lot of people that I didn't even know. But the most important part was that when I walked home that night, I felt something that I hadn't felt in a really long time. I felt free. The chains of shame and condemnation that the enemy had me bound in were broken. The enemy had spent months relentlessly condemning me and accusing me. But now that everything was in the light, he had no power and I was free. One of the major reasons you might get stuck in a soul tie is that you haven't confessed your sin to receive the freedom and the power you need to break free. There is power in confession to God and confession to trustworthy brothers and sisters in Christ that can pray for you. If you stay in the dark, you will continue to be bound to your sin when Christ came for the sole purpose of setting you free. Now, here's what's funny. So I'm confessing my sin at this Bible study, airing all my dirty laundry, crying and all, right? And in that same circle is a young man named Donald Patterson. Now, if you don't know, Donald is my handsome husband and the amazing father of our two children. At that Bible study, I had no idea. God was breaking those chains to set me free so that he could position me to receive his best he was chasing me with his love and setting me up for purpose and success. This is why God doesn't want you bound in an ungodly soul tie because he has so much more for you and we receive his best when we're free. If we want to be free, in addition to confession, we also need forgiveness. Forgiveness is such an important part in finding healing from a broken soul tie. While I was in counseling for anxiety years later, the relationship that I had with my ex came up and my counselor asked me if I had forgiven myself. The 18 year old girl who broke her promise to God. No one had ever asked me that before, so I never thought about it. But in that moment, if I wanted to be honest, I had to tell her, no, I didn't forgive her. 
Now, you might be thinking, it's not that serious, you know? It's not like you were sleeping around with a whole bunch of people. You didn't do all this other kind of stuff. It's just one person, blah, blah, blah. But to me, it was that serious. And that was just exasperated with all the shame and the guilt that I was drowning in at that time. And it caused me to be so frustrated with myself. And also because I didn't have a good grasp of God's grace and love at the time. And so, no, I hadn't let it go. And I realized that I needed to process forgiving myself because I was judging my 18 year old self with my 30 something year old mind. But 18 year old Christina had a lot of trauma and wounds that led her to make the decisions that she made that she didn't even know she was struggling with at the time. She was just doing the best that she could with what she had. And I had to gain that perspective in order to be able to forgive myself and not hold on to that shame. I needed to get to a place where I could look back and despite my mistakes say, I'm proud of you. I love you. If it weren't for you and your commitment to keep going, even as you struggled, I wouldn't be here today. And praise God, he got me to that point. But I also had to forgive my ex-boyfriend. I had another dream. Clearly, God speaks to me through dreams. But I had another dream where God was speaking to me. And he said, there's something I need you to let go of. And I said, what? And when I said that, I saw uh, the face of my ex. And I was so confused because I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm not even thinking about him. Like, why would that pop up in my head? I already forgave him, God, what are you talking about? And God revealed to me that I had forgiven him, but I had not completely released him. Total forgiveness requires release. It doesn't mean that you just forgive them and say, okay, don't worry about it. It means that you don't feel that the person that you've forgiven owes you anything. You are complete in God and you don't need anything from them. An apology would be great, but you're okay if you don't get one. Affirmation would be nice, but you don't need it. If you're trying to get their attention or, or hope that they see how much better you're doing without them, you haven't released it because you still desire something from them. Holding a grudge only tightens the grip of a soul tie. But when you find your needs met in Christ, you don't feel that anybody owes you anything and you can release the offense and truly be set free. My challenge to you when it comes to healing emotionally from a broken soul tie is to write a forgiveness letter to yourself or to your ex, or maybe even to God if you're mad at him. My friend Kia Stevens has a wonderful article on how to do just that, and I'm gonna link it below, and the link will also be in the free guide that you can download that accompanies this video. Now, when your mind and heart are healed and in alignment with God, your will, which is your desires, will also be in alignment with God. Psalm 37, four says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. When we delight in God, he grants us our desires because they are in alignment with his. It's then that he knows that we'll make the right choices and decisions that are in his plan for us as our souls are bent and inclined towards him. An ungodly soul tie will always lead you away from God and his will. But with healed hearts and minds, we will choose God's will and follow his way. Now, what is his way? Well, Jesus tells us that he is the way. It's following the way of Jesus. It's living like Jesus. You can't do that with an ungodly soul tie because your affections will always be divided. Now, it's not easy to choose God's way but it's always worth it. As my heart healed from the broken soul tie, I made a point to memorize James 1 verse 12 to remind myself every day that I made the right choice. It reads, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. After God showed me his love when I was faithless to him, he truly set me free and I was determined to live for him, to completely follow the way of Jesus. Not because I had to, but because I wanted to. I desired to. It was now my will.
it was a response of gratitude, not duty. So although living for God is not always easy, when your heart and mind are in alignment with him, you won't want to live any other way. This is how we live pure lives. We don't legalistically just check all the Christian do's and don'ts. We let God transform our minds and cleanse our hearts. Then his will will also become ours. This is the process of soul healing. After being set free at that Bible study, I decided to keep going back to Bible study. My relationship with God flourished. I cut all ties with my ex. I let God start the healing process of my soul. And about a year later, Donald and I started dating. On our second or third date, I can't remember, I wanted to set some clear boundaries because I was not about to make the same mistakes I made before. And Although I really liked Donald, I needed him to know that I was not going to be having sex until we got married and that I took that very seriously. And as much as I liked him, I was 100% ready to walk away and just let it go if he couldn't accept that. So it's the end of the date and I'm thinking, okay, I need to have this conversation with him. At that same time, Donald parks his car before we get to my dorm room where he was gonna drop me off. And he's like, I need to have a conversation with you. And I'm like, Okay, brother looks me dead in the eyes and says, listen, I'm a Christian and I'm waiting to have sex until I get married. So I need to make sure that you're cool with that. And I'm looking around like, bruh, you talking to me? Cause I'm talking to you. <laughs> Donald was so in alignment with what God had for me because being in a relationship with someone who is also in alignment with God doesn't necessarily make everything easy, but my goodness, it makes it possible. Donald and I kept our word and that was one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. When I was young, going to that True Love Waits conference and such, I prayed to God that he would give me the strength and help me wait to have sex until I got married. And although it didn't happen the way that I thought it would, I now see through all the heartbreak, God was getting me to a place where he could answer that prayer. Where I was faithless, he remained faithful. I'm living proof that being set free from a soul tie and healing from a soul wound is possible and God can give you far above all you can ask or imagine. It is his will for you. The journey to healing and wholeness takes time, work, prayer, and most of all, it takes God. But beloved, you are so worth it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for every one of my sisters and even some of my brothers who might be watching this right now, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will break ungodly soul ties, God, and start the process of divine healing of our minds, our hearts, and our wills, God. I pray, Lord, that you would transform and renew our minds. Give us your thoughts, God. I pray that you would heal our hearts, Father God. Hear our cries, wipe our tears, heal us and make us whole in your presence, Father God. And I just pray that our wills will align with yours, God, and we will walk in the purpose and the destiny that you have for us and nothing will get in the way of that. We cast down any thought, idea, or scheme of the enemy trying to get in the way of what you have for us, God. We surrender to you, God, and your greater plan for our lives. Thank you for chasing us down with your love, Father God. Thank you for covering us with your grace and mercy, God. You are worthy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As you heal, it's important to hold on to God's truth. So check out this video where I share God's promise for a broken heart to restore your hope. For further help on your healing journey, be sure to download the Healed, Holy, and Whole workbook that accompanies this message at the link below. Thank you so much for watching today. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.